as you're learning to carve on a pole or, or something, you know, you, the master carver will do the one half and, you know, they'll have the student copying it, you know, so you're, you're actually doing the same cuts. This is about a 150 year old Hyde event chest that has been in the Pitt Rivers collection for well over 100 years. When we first walked into the room where the box was held, you know, we were both immediately taken with it, just the, the expertise that we've seen. We wanted to go back to the museum to carve a replica of the great box and then bring it home. Yeah, the drawing comes pretty close to the edges. Yeah, one will be straight up. So the In my generation, my brother's generation, um, we do have a lot to call upon. You know, the masters of the earlier generations before us, Bill Reed and Robert Davidson, you know, when they entered into the art form, they came in on a totally different world. You know, they, they came into a world that, that was devastated by the loss and the real work of rebuilding hadn't come as far as it has today. We still rely on the same things that they relied on, which is looking to the old masters. Those other older masterworks come from this unbroken path, you know, the unbroken stream of the development of the art. In 2009 was the first time my brother and myself came to the Pitt River Museum. You always feel two ways when you're in a museum like that because it's so awesome to be in the presence of all this old height of things but at the same time you you know you feel a sadness because all those things were uh, removed from our village and, and by that removing has lost its purpose in our community. I didn't expect it actually but when I walked into the room with the chief's headdresses it was a very emotional experience and, I, and uh, it caught me off guard. You know, those pieces felt like they were lost. We spent 28 days straight at the museum working. Eight, 10, 12 hour days. Every day we learned something new from the box. The way he cut in the eyes, the way he composed a certain element of the design. You know, it felt like he was there, right, teaching us. It's also, a, you know, a really good challenge for us to sort of dig through the layers of his intent through the actual physical object. You don't have perfect luck here, huh? Yeah, we don't want to get the ammonia to make the plastic. He's going to bring the plastic out. This will be up. No, this will be up this way, and this will be up this way. No, no. Shoot, 15 minutes. So it's bang, bang, it's got the overhang, and then shoot. How much more time? Five more minutes. See that five minute big vlog? <laughs> <laughs> this will be up here. Teaching hasn't been passed by explanation of a piece so much as by the, the doing and the replicating of the piece. What you're learning is you're learning the muscle memory of the ovoids and when you're that age you don't know why you're doing it but your mind is learning those curves and the, the flow of the form line. 
looking at the original piece, you could see the gestural nature of the cuts. You can see where the nature of the grain of the wood dictated what he did and how he did it. On the box, the artist had cut underneath the eyelids the reverse of anything that uh, me or Gwai had ever seen before. You know, because we were wanting to learn what he was doing, you know, we could see that it was purposeful, right? It wasn't just uh, a mistake or anything, so we, we were replicating it. But still not quite understanding why he'd do it, you know, it was more work to do it that way. But when we were carving, there was a light shining from above, and it created a little light line underneath the eyelid. We realized that it was probably the same light, you know, that would be coming in through a smoke hole to create that line, right, rather than a shadow. So, so the artist was playing with the light. Mm -hmm. Not uh, so evident in this box, but uh, thinner here than here, thin, you know, thin here and here and then thicker. So on this side, he just popped all this wood right out. We didn't do it the same. And then left it as a V-cut on this side. Our art was never static, you know, our, it was, uh, there was people playing with it and having fun. Every artist has a different way to, uh, to express themselves within their boxes.